Yeah, welcome. I think it's episode number 32 of Mara Mahistrashi. I, you know, one of the comments on the videos was from the singer of one of the songs that we had played called Mother Mary Mashi. And he had said that that song was written by Alex Baisley, originally of Maple Glen. And I was actually thinking about it, and I, I hadn't played much of the song in the previous video, maybe only a minute. So I figured I'd give, uh, I'd pay some more homage to that right now. And on the vocals, we're going to have Frank McKibben, Jenny McKibben on guitar, Colin Grant on fiddle, Bradley Murphy on piano, and Jason Rudderham on the bass. So here we go, folks. We're going to play that song right now as I drive up to Chatham through Logieville along the river. Send a fish to the north <laughs> to be walking down the beach when I spied an old man. He was lying on his back with a bottle of wine and a smile on his face as he traveled through time. He opened his eyes and he looked my way and we talked till the sun went down. He said, I left this river in 61. God, it's good to be back home. the northwest Miramichi with the boys from Baisley Road. Then we strike Sunny Corner on a Saturday night and we dance to the fiddle till the morning light. He went on to talk of springtime girls, Christmas stocking peaches, life on the farm in Maple Glen. How getting by was so much harder then. Harder than any cry for Mother Maramushi Continue your journey to the deep blue sea Let me stand on your shoreline and feel the soft breeze Roll on Mother Maramushi Roll on Mother Maramushi Toronto, she just would not stray away from her grandkids in the opera club. But Christ, he wanted to stay. He loved the Miramichi River, her people strong and kind. But he had to leave to join his wife. Ah, oh, just memories out of time. Out of time, and he cried, Oh, Mother Miramichi, continue your journey to the deep blue sea. Let me stand on your shoreline and feel the soft breeze. Roll on, Mother Maramushi. Roll on, Mother Maramushi. recording and a great vocal and great playing so thank you guys
in the Miramichi has begun, folks. I was away for a few days, and when I came back, it was lots of cars lined up along the river. I just heard the fishermen talking back there. They said they're not getting anything today. Or at this moment, a bunch of boys out in a boat right there. You got another fisherman right here. A few people along the bank right there. Might have to go get myself a fishing rod. Well, you're not shy, are you? No. Okay, who are we here with today? Connor Parks. Connor Parks? Yeah. Okay, and we got a local bass fisherman, and look at, okay, look at this beautiful uh, uh, eel-looking um, bait on his hook. And okay, let's see what your casting technique is here, Connor. There it is, folks. Oh, right on. I'd estimate that to be about 110-foot cast. No fish today, eh? One small one, but it wasn't a keeper. One small one, he says. It's not a keeper. Oh! Oh, you thought you had one. There was one on there. Well, that would have been cool. Let's see if, uh, let's see if they still chase it. You're coming in from Red Bank, you say? Uh, I'm in, I'm in eel ground right now. Oh, in eel ground, right on. Okay, one more cast. Let's see if we get lucky. We almost caught, we almost had a lucky little, uh... <laughs> What about last year? Did you catch any bass last year? Yeah, some pretty big ones. Yeah, right on. And what about you behind me? She caught a pretty big one. Oh yeah, she caught a bigger one, folks. And he was jealous. <laughs> you playing any ball? No. Hockey. Music? Hockey. Hockey. Okay, there's two casts. We did not get lucky. But right on. Thanks, Connor. No problem. I've seen I've seen several eagles today. What's your name? Aaliyah. What is it? Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Oh, that's a nice name. Okay, here's Connor again, folks. Little one more cast and that's it. I'm going home. We got the old Centennial Bridge in the background. Aaliyah has, is done for the day. She wants to go get a hot chocolate, she said. Extra marshmallows. Connor said he caught one on his first cast. Had it one nibble since, and that's it. Okay, good luck to you, eh, Connor? See ya. Okay, folks, this cabinet, it, it's actually way more than I thought. So this is a, a look at the Rogers drawer, Rogers uh, drawers in action. That's from, uh, that's 2001. Beautiful work on those. Well, there's one, we know a guy that just has commented twice wanting to officially name these Raj trays. Hey, what do you think of that, Raj? Raj trays. I think we can come up with uh, what kind of creativity is that? That's see. <laughs> uh, these Raj trays were man, they they're they're quite beautiful. But this whole cabinet right here, guys, is full. And I thought when we began this project, Raj, I thought that's the only collection you had and let me tell you folks it extends much further than this cabinet well to make it easier to get the hand in here to get these out yes these trays that they had a, a, a divider here okay and it could move up or if they put paperwork in they would bring that up yes but then when you put it back here yes it was interfering with the trays going in and get your hand in. Oh, I see. So I had to take the grinder and yep. uh, grind off some of the, the screws there to get them out. So now I have a... Oh, little... you got some... Oh, you just did that this morning. Well, I just uh, did uh, oh, right uh, on. three drawers here. Some of the other ones I did last year. 
Okay, so we're getting ready for another episode. Raj is uh, filing stuff away. He's been at her. I've been away for some days. And we're going to be working on part... Um, he, he's got some stuff laid out. We're having fun, folks. We'll be with you guys in a couple of minutes. The fisherman thing and what people need to, to fish. Oh, yeah. Okay, these are... Uh... Okay, I just pressed the old record, and here we are, Raj. It's been, uh, well, today's, um, I think it's April 16th, or the 17th. I think it's the 16th, so today's a Wednesday. The last episode we did was on a Thursday, so almost a week. I was gone for a few days down to the States to visit my sister in the Boston area, doing some hanging out. It was good times. Nothing amazing happened except for family connections, which I guess is amazing. And how's, how are you holding out, Raj? What were you up to over the past... Uh, oh, oh, my God. Everything. Yeah. Well, you know, whenever you get to sign a spring... Yeah. The plows... <coughs> Whenever they're plowing snow, there's always some uh, little issues with the lawn and stuff. Eh? Yeah. So I get rid right on top of that right away. Okay. And it's just... Uh, Fix, you're out doing some yard. You're just always doing work anyway, well, right? I always use that terminology of playing yard. Playing yard. Yeah, a lot of people don't play yard. They just leave yeah. it. And, uh, well, there's a lot of people in the world that don't have the... Um, that never had the um, actually experience of having of being like growing up in a home on a on a, on a yard, yeah. you know. So you got to feel fortunate that you do have your own yard and to make use of it when you do. So you know, if, if you think about the world and cities and apartment complexes and stuff, people actually grew up without even knowing what it's like to yeah. run a lawnmower or do anything. So it's kind of a it's kind of a privilege and a luxury to have those things. So as we speak, there's people along the river now. But their fishing rods out. Oh yeah. Up to their waists and yeah. they're off the wharf. They're on the beaches. They're everywhere. They're out in the boats. Yeah. So that's a little topic that uh, we're gonna maybe do on the next. Uh, yeah. Well, I've been. I haven't been on the Miramichi for a long time, so I haven't. I. I. I, uh, I I'm ignorant to this whole bass. Uh, this bass, yeah. uh, the, the 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 bass craze. Uh, just a couple of a couple of things. Uh, from I don't know what episode it was a couple of episodes ago I said I was like struggling with the Archang Arch you know Archangel is the pronunciation um, the Paul Henderson goal time from 72 I said I in my mind I said 156 something told I didn't look it up but something tells me that's wrong I don't know what it is. Lowell Loveday, he was coaching a team. I was, you know, I'm all backwards and pointing at photos from behind. I pointed to the wrong get, guy. I know who Lowell Loveday is. Um, we showed a, the, the brick buildings on the old CFB Chatham. They called it a gangster ghetto. I said it was on the north east side i meant i was thinking west it northwest that those buildings were yeah. and i just within my talking i said lacy lynch is the son of greg lynch well obviously the daughter so those are just i'm just we're saying a lot of words so welcome to another episode of merima history she raj we're on number 32 we're doing the year 2000 part three nephew uncle we're doing a youtube project we're doing it for fun this is roger Cummel, the local historian uh who has collected decades and decades and decades and decades and decades of local recent history via mainly the local Miramichi leader or Miramichi press paper, but its surrounding area. And Raj deserves a lot of credit for his collection. It is, we're just skimming the surface. We're not pretending to be experts here. We're just going through the articles. Basically, we're opening one of the old Raj trays. There you go, Mr. Mark Cummel. Um, and we're, uh, we're, we're just reading these along with you guys. We're just having fun. We're not pretending to, like I say, be experts or anything. So that's, that's what the project is. It's been therapeutic. It's been a, it's been really nice to go back into, um, our community to showcase the, um, you know, how capable Miramichiers are and were in the past and how many great stories we do have. So Raj was up doing a little bit of, um, homework. 
I was at uh, I was out hanging around today. So Raj, you have um Oh you're talking about a, a fishing issue maybe our next uh, our next sit down here mm. about fishing. Well I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce us to this program here on a fishing issue. Oh, right on. Just for a little preliminary before we do this tomorrow. Oh, yeah. The next time. Oh, no, I, I just mean like, you know, those little, um, you know, I, I show a little video before we begin. Yeah. Out yeah. on the sheet. I'm yeah. just going to show a little bit of yeah. some bass fishing, hopefully. Well, here, here, this is a, a lady here that's uh, right in our family on the Henry Cummel side. Okay. So, Henry Cummel. Roger's grandfather, my great grandfather. Yeah, so Henry Cummel's uh, sister, Rosemma Ryan from Chatham, this is one of her daughters, and this is what she did in her past. Oh, wow. Okay, so Eileen Murphy on the river. Um, it is a dazzling collection of feathers, floss, and tinsel. Mm -hmm. So there she is, folks. Roger's distant cousin... And that's one of her creations. She was creating... I think it's the Millennium Fly. The Millennium Fly. Uh, and the woman who designed the 2000 Salmon Fly says it symbolizes the courage, beauty, and strength of our people. Eileen Murphy began, began tying flies in her Miramichi home in 1987 after shyly sneaking peeks over the shoulder of Father Walter Lynch for two years. Today... Framed flies tied by Murphy fetch $90 each, an amount she admits is grossly underpriced given the existing market and demand for her work. I've known that feeling of wanting to be able to get something and not being able, she said simply when asked why she doesn't charge more. Oh, so it's, maybe are they for use or just for framing? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, they're, they're for use. They use them, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's a beautiful creation. There's the artist. I don't know. What do you call a fly tire? I, I'm going to say artist. I'm calling those who fly, make fishing flies. We're oh, naming them artists here on Mara Mahistor She, folks. Wait till you see this. Opening here. Oh, wow. So this is from the Miramichi Leader, Raj. I got to get back into the groove here. I've been away for too oh, long. Uh, yeah. January 14th, 2000. Hooked on fly tying. This is from the local paper. And look at the, look at the uh, extension of coverage they gave. This is beautifully done, beautifully presented. And look at this woman's work. This is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I don't know much about uh, the fly tying art form, but I'm sure they can. I, I know by reading a recent book from David Adams Richards, his fishing book, how important and how much fishermen love their certain fl uh, flies and how they go to them at different times, different. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Some of the names of uh, her uh, flies are Blue Charm, Silver Doctor, Black Bear Green Butt, Dusty Miller, Miramichi Cosaboom, Cosboom, Green Highlander, and the Millennium Fly, Eileen Murphy. The article was written by Rick McLean in the year 2000. Absolutely beautiful, Raj. What a great way to um, begin yeah. our program. You can fold that back up. Oh, yeah. that's a fold. You see how he, you like, again, he's <laughs> keeping an eye on me at all times. He wants everything perfectly done. It's an amazing, he has this balance of, come on in, you're welcome to look around. Don't touch, but touch. It's a very amazing balance that this man provides here. Now, here's a well-known person on the memory sheet. Oh, yes. Yeah. Packing it in. Oh, right. Okay. Back in 2000. Okay, so this was 2000. A tearful farewell. After 38 years and thousands of patients, Dr. Benjamin Luke is retiring. And there he is, folks. I know exactly where his uh, original... Um, location was there he is dr kumar luke he actually worked on my dad's back several times dad spoke very highly of him or sorry uh no that's uh, sorry that's ben luke this is dr kumar which i'm assuming is his son and his uh 
operation is located just off the King George Highway over by the Shell, uh, or sorry, the Petrocan. And there he is, he's retiring after 38 years. I knew his son, uh, Devin, uh, from UNB, and I actually saw Devin Luke in Vancouver. Oh, wow. One Good. day walking by, and I didn't know he was there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he came to Canada in 1962. He arrived in 1962. Um, yeah, right on. So he, yeah, he had a great, uh, he had a great business over there. Helped many peoples. I think he was, um, was he a chiropractor or he did? Uh, um, yeah. I'm not sharp yet. He did the acupuncture. Yeah. Yeah, he was an ac. He was a yeah. He was a chiropractor, acupuncture, and home. Uh, yeah, an acupuncturist and a chiropractor. And he did good work. A lot, many people spoke oh. very highly of his yeah. things. Did you ever go see him at, yeah, at a certain yeah, time? Yeah, I, I did, yeah. Yeah, right on. Okay, this is a big devastation, dev, devastating accident that occurred on the train. Mm. And we're going to show several pages. You don't have okay. to just show the pages and we'll see how Okay. Well. How the newspaper looked after that. Okay. So once again, this is from February the 1st, the year 2000. Miramichi leader. First it shook, then bang. Train crash. What is this all about here, folks? There's some photos of that. I don't remember this at all. I was not around at that time. A via rail passenger train bound for Halifax ended up on the wrong track Sunday around 10.20 a.m., barely a kilometer from the station in Miramichi. That's why it crashed into parked boxcars, sending dozens of passengers and crew careening forward, say Transportation Safety Board of Canada officials. Now, I don't want to ask a question, but I think I might have known somebody that was on this. I, okay. Wow. Brutal, terrible. Yeah. This is on the back page here. Yeah, we're just going to show all the, the coverage of the, okay. of the paper. <clears throat> this is from 2000, uh, yeah, a please. kilometer outside. Wow. Imagine that. You're just driving down a train and all of a sudden, snap of the fingers, your life can change. Boxcar hit by train, worker coordinates rescue effort. Paramedic Tara Kennedy checks out an unidentified VIA employee. Via employee assists a passenger from the train. Okay. This is uh, <clears throat> some of the help. That, uh, okay. Getting, Community uh, rushes to aid those in crash. This is from a train that went down the wrong track, crashed into a boxcar uh, that was sitting there from the year 2000. And the Newcastle Fire Hall was set up as a disaster center passageway between cars twisted by derailment leslie tulock relaxes with a book just a sample of some of the food delivered to the fire hall passengers <coughs> board bus to fire hall wow yeah well anyway this headline headline here was these people <coughs> went and buried their son in ontario oh. on the way home they were on this accident okay I just uh seen there for okay Couple buries son on train Sunday. Couple had a lunch at the fire hall before they boarded a bus for the rest of the trip to Moncton. So they were, they, uh, okay. Camilla and Bud Carroll were just returning from Hamilton, Ontario, where they had uh, dealt with a family tragedy and they were on this train. So that must've been a very difficult time uh, for them. Wow. All right. What is, wow. Uh, and there's more photos from that. I, where was I at this time? I don't really remember this. Huh? Wow. Um. We don't have to read too much there no. just to show the pictures. Yeah. Right? Just to show, uh, show the, the great covers that the... The newspaper was showing yeah. well. Roger has several pages on this. Taylor, Chris Taylor and Sean Legier, paramedic, paramedic unhurt, rushes to help others. Workers remove injured passengers, carefully buckle into sleds, take them to ambulances. I wonder what uh, the total, uh, I think I know somebody that was on this. I'm not gonna say that right here, just in case I get that wrong. But if it is the right person, I know that they, um, 
suffered an injury that they still deal with to this day. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Laid off via worker tossed around in train crash Sunday. Pregnant mother escapes injury. Baby sleeps through crash. Wow. Yeah. Now we can we can end it off with the color. Okay. Color A collision course, and then Rogers' uh, coverage is just on this. Uh, you know, Rog, I was just thinking like this would have been a brutal thing. This is from the 2000 issue. Via rail, went down the wrong track. I wonder whose fault that was. I'm sure whoever's it was had a really tough time dealing with all of that. Workers with backboards scrambled Sunday to remove those hurt in the train collision. Snowmobilers helped get the injured to waiting ambulances along just a plowed road. So once again, people in the Miramichi came together and uh, helped out those that were injured. This would have been a really terrible time, but I was just like, you know, I haven't been around in a long time, so I know newspapers are, this is not the heyday of the newspaper. The recent issue of the Miramichi Leader was just delivered, I think, today, and I was leafing through it or whenever it was yesterday or something like that, and it's, you know, five or six pages, and the um, eclipse was covered, and I think it was just like a couple of photos, and if this was maybe 20 years ago or 25 years ago, I could just imagine the paper would have covered that whole event in, you know, several pages of color is what I first thought, and the reason I thought that is because we're doing this project, Raj. Okay, so this is uh, <coughs> action at the New Sunny Corner Arena. Okay, so in 2000, great turnout as Arena hosts first tourney. There was a great turnout at the first annual Sunny Corner Legionnaire Gentlemen's Hockey Tournament held at the newly constructed Community Arena recently. And this was in the year 2000, so Sunny Corner gets an arena. They've often said in Canada, there's two institutions that are each community needs. One of them is a hockey rink and the other one is a church. Cup winners from that tournament. Let's go. They were called the A.R. Dawson Lights. We have Duke Connolly played softball against him. Peter Pinder, former member of the uh, Packers. Eric McLennigan, Jed Casey, Jamie Keys, Ron McCombs, Eddie Pinder, another Packer, and Jamie Sullivan. Peter Campbell, Mark Dunnett. He played sports all along as, with his brother Mike. In the Newcastle system, Larry Way, Kevin Walsh, Teddy Tozer, and Darwin McAllister. Doug White and Larry Way, champions right there. And what else do we got? We got uh, Natalie Way and Amanda Assel. They look like they were selling tickets or doing something along those lines. So congratulations. They had a... Uh, their first tournament in, at the newly constructed Sunny Corner Arena in the year 2000. Okay, and this now the big, uh, February 4th edition. Now this is some more hockey teams from the Salmon Tournament. Okay. So the famed Miramichi Salmon Tournament, this is the 2000 edition. And there is the Midget A Beavers and the Bantam A Beavers. Midget is on top. There's a team, the Midget A Beavers. And there are the Bantam Beavers. And are we going to... You got a few more from that, eh? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so see. sorry, guys. Well, I see... Uh, uh, sorry, guys. We're going to read a roster. And then here's some more. This is the... Um, this is Pee Wee AAA and the Pee Wee A. There they are, folks. The AAA on top. The Pee Wee A on the bottom. And on that AAA team from the Pee Wee in 2000, Matthew Hubby, Pamela Patterson. We covered her the other day. Brian Martin, Corey Porter, Lance Woodman, Riley Watling, Logie Miller, Corey Cormier, Ryan McDonald. There's Rock, folks. Uh, Josh McGregor, Jamie Watling was the coach, Jeremy Turcott, Tyler O'Reilly, Sean Loban, Adam Obey, Robert Taylor, I think it's Nate Francis or something uh, marring the words, Michael Sullivan, 
uh, Toby Porter and absent was Bruce McDonald, Wilson Bell, and Jeremy Leggett, Ricky McKenzie. So where do we have? Rock was wearing an A. There he is. Logie Villar, Ryan McDonald, right there, folks. Friend of the show, wearing an A at the Salmon Tournament, the year 2000, the Pee Wee Triple A. Um, Beavers. Right on. And who else is in this well, tournament, Raj? We're going to feature, feature this young group here. Okay. Out of the three. And it would be interesting to see if this Pamela Patterson went on to play hockey into her further career. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so we got Miramichi Salmon Tournament 2000. we got the Adam A. Buns Masters, the Canadian Tire Beavers, and the Jean Coutu Ironman Adam. So there's a few more rosters from the old Salmon Tournament. Look at the coverage in the local newspaper, folks. Isn't this wonderful? Young, healthy children playing some hockey. And on that Adam Bundmasters, we had Scott Trevers, Chris McDowell, Brandon Giberson, Daniel McGregor. The coaches were Gary Dunn and Jim Malone, Adam Murray, Brian Dunn, Jordan Cortez, Matthew Gauguin, Tyler Hardinger, Robbie McLeod, Joey McMillan, Peter Donovan, Sandy Hay, Kyle Kelly, Joshua Sturgeon, Mark Kingston, and none other than NHLer Brad Malone. And if I do believe uh, that is him where my finger is right there. Many NHL games. We talked about him many times on this show. He deserves a lot of credit. He's had a great professional career. He's in Bakersfield right now. I think he's the captain of that team. And he's a great guy. So we'll do, uh, we'll do one more team here. Okay. There are all kinds of teams there. We just can't read them all off here. Yeah. So this is uh, Harold Flieger's team here. Okay, this is the... The Bantam AAA Ironman from the Miramichi Salmon Tournament, folks. This is a great weekend on the Miramichi. The hotels are packed, and uh, the city is a buzz. There's nothing like a good old uh, hockey tournament, a minor hockey tournament. The Miramichi 2000, Bantam AAA, Riverman. Marvin McCarthy was the manager. Harold Flieger, the coach. Carl Butch Waters, another coach. Ryan Campbell. Carol, Brett Campbell, Timmy Bowes, Philip Loban, Kyle Barter, Danny Rashore, Bobby Norton, Tim Sullivan, Jeremy Guimon was a coach, Paul O'Hara. We may have read this out on a previous uh, last week, but that's okay. Sean Loge, Brad Hamilton, Justin Driscoll, Darren Hardy was wearing the C, Joey Trayer and Lucas Savoy and Justin Driscoll were the assistant captains, Alan Savoy, Sam Poirier, Lance Parker, and there he is, folks, Roger Cummo's neighbor, none other than Tony Robichaud. He's now living out in Napin, has a brood of children, and like we said before, Raj and I take credit for part of his development as he played lots of road hockey out in Roger's yard growing up. So we celebrate an 80th birthday. Oh, wow, look at this amazing artist, this amazing woman. And I gotta make some phone calls, and I'll pro I'm gonna try to do that either today or tomorrow. A salute to Matilda. Party plan for January 29th to celebrate her 80th birthday. Matilda Murdoch, Logieville's greatest artist. She is an absolute treasure. What you know in the Miramichi. And this is her 80th birthday in the year 2000. Look how amazing she looks at looks like when she looked when she was 80 years old. And there's none, there's nobody better on that instrument than her. Matilda Murdoch and Norman Young jamming at Matilda's home in Logieville. And uh, you're gonna put this aside, eh? Yeah. Maybe we'll cover that when we get. Hopefully one or two of her children in this basement, Raj, and we'll just talk Matilda for an hour or yeah. so. There's some students and okay. the, another performance. Students perform as live mannequins, okay? We covered a bit of this before. Students in Lloyd Cameron's theater art class, this is from January 7, 2000, at James M. Hill posed as live mannequins as part of Christmas Promotions Project of the Water Street Business District Corporation coordinated by Carol Campbell, the legendary Lloyd Cameron taught at James M. Hill and Dr. Loge. Uh, his main, I would say, uh, 
impact on the students was through the theater arts. He was an English teacher and he was the mastermind behind many, many productions in the theater arts. And he was a great teacher. Michelle Kelly and Krista Carroll in Scott's, is that Michelle Kelly of Jimmy and, yeah? No. Uh, Ryan McCarthy and Shane Guimond, uh, Amanda Buckley, Christine Sidham and Krista Carroll. And Amy Doucette, uh, Gerard's daughter, and Corey Fowler, uh, son of Din, who are Roger's neighbors. And actually, Michelle Kelly is another Logie Miller. I, th I think this is Michelle. I like. Oh, it yeah. says Michelle Kelly. Sorry if we get it wrong, but the daughter of Jimmy and Paula, ladies and gentlemen, just a, I mean, a, dr a good driver that way. Like, I think if I teed off, I could <laughs> almost hit their house if I got all of it. And it was a little downhill. Well, this area <laughs> here is about a few people that were so hot, they had to get cooled off. Okay. They were so hot. This is January the 4th. How do you cool off in the wintertime near New Year's? It is the good old polar dip. And this is from the Miramichi Leader, January 4th edition. And there was a big polar swim here on the river, folks. I wonder if everybody... Uh, it, there it is. Look at that. Jumping in. That takes a lot of courage to just do it. Who are some of these people? Well, we're going to let you know really quickly right now. And great photos. Uh, okay, it's a crowd. Uh, Jessica Bro hit the water just ahead of uh, Gabrielle Levesque. We have Gabrielle Levesque and Jessica, Jessica Bro. They were uh, eight, nine years old. And there they are right there. They did it. Um, there's lots of evidence and research people are doing the cold showers now. It's supposed to be good for health. I don't know the details on it. Organizer was Alan Adams. He took the plunge. Uh, Charles Dolaire, he was the guy bundled up. Uh, Jacques Bro wasted little time getting out of the water. And Daniel Jacques Bro and Daniel Lebec. So they must have been the fathers of those two girls that we just showed. Right on, great event, really cool. I know they have it in Vancouver, Raj, but there's no ice on there, so although it would be cold, it's not the same as this. Recognition for the Mamrishi. Oh, right on. Couple's baby boy believed first birth on continent in 2000. And this is kind of similar to the story we showed in 89. I think it was Chris and uh, Darlene Ross had the first baby in Canada. This is the first on the continent. Nadine Savoie-Thibodeau with newborn son, Marc-André Thibodeau. And look at that, folks. That is the first child on the North American continent in the new century. Right there. Proud and happy mom. Doing a little feeding. He's the first baby in Miramichi, New Brunswick, Canada, and build and is billed at the first in North America, and he's as cute as can be. Right on. Proud and happy parents are Nadine Savoie Thibodeau and yep. Amy Thibodeau of Legacyville. Yep. Mark is their first child. Right on. Congratulations to you guys. I wonder how the first baby in on the continent is doing in the year 2024. I think the first. Okay, this is really cool. This is new window at St. Mary's helps mark new millennium. And Roger Como cuts these out over decades and decades and decades and deserves a lot of credit for each of these articles that we're just sharing with a few people around the Miramichi that are um, uh, hanging out with us on YouTube. St. Mary's Roman Catholic Church in Miramichi unveiled and blessed a 300 and blessed a 300 square foot stained glass window under the title Our Lady of the Millennium. So right on, that's really cool, Raj. Holy shit. Really cool. Now this is interesting here. Yeah. Yeah. There's a uh, unknown people. Yeah. That left photos behind. Okay. There's Junior's wife, Marty O'Brien. Mm-hmm. So Mark Junior's wife. I think he's one of the barbers. Okay. Just show each picture there and Okay. Well we just focus. Okay, so come 
and get them. The Miramichi Weekend. These are old photos from the last uh, uh, many years. These are... Uh, there's no names on it, but this was just in the year 2000 and they were just reminiscing at old photos from local Miramichi or that local Miramichi or shared. Sorry, we can't really share who these people are, but this just shows you what was going on in the newspaper 24 years ago. But Roger points out that this fine dame right here is Margie O'Brien, formerly that married a junior, McClarence McDonald. We all said junior. And um, so she had, I think, six children. Larry, Eddie, Derek, Ricky, Vicky, and Kim. A great Logieville family. Lots of sports being played. And, you know, we can go on and on about their accolades in the sporting world on the Miramichi. So she was a great woman. Let's feature this lady here. Okay. And that. Okay. And maybe that. Okay. And that should take care of that. Okay. So this is from 2000. Roger must have cut this out of the tra Times and Transcript at a monkey. Moncton, Hollywood glamour queen, Hedy Lamar. Da is it Hedy? Hedy Lamar dies at age 86. She was once billed the world's most beautiful woman. Very subjective, folks. But you know how they put these titles on things. Hedy yep. Lamar in 1943, promotional photo for the film, The Heavenly Body, right on. Yeah, I, I remember that name. I just didn't know the pronunciation. There she is, folks. I don't know how you could ever just say the world's most beautiful woman. I'm sure the people in Japan thought something different. The people in India thought something different. The people in Brazil saw, thought something different. And you know what I mean, right? Okay. That's like giving like the Oscars, the best movie. Who says so? It's very subjective. We're going to feature one of our elder, elderly ladies. Oh, here. yeah. Okay. Back in 2000. How? Okay. Logieville Parishioner keeps making a difference. Uh, Lumina Rabasha poses in her garage with boxes for people in Haiti. And this was a Logieveller. I would say her house from Rogers would be three good drives. And she was the mother of Frankie, David, Paul, uh, Linda. Is that it? Is it just the four? What about Alfie? Was he hers, or yeah, he no, came from the? No, Alfie yeah. was uh, Joe's first right. wife. Right. So Lumina was a beautiful, uh, beautiful souled woman, always very friendly, and she was the mother to Logieville's greatest shortstop and his, you know, like uh, David Rabisha and all his older brother Frankie wasn't too far behind, and the grandmother to Manick and Denise. We mentioned them many times, Eric and Tony, uh, just to name a few. You uh, and, when you were talking about the shortstops, yeah, uh, one day did you mention Tommy Lane? Diane? Oh, you know what? That is a uh, you know I'm just saying that Logieville's greatest shortstop because I know David, yeah. but David Rabasha and Tommy Langtang were probably would probably have to duke it out for Logieville's greatest shortstop. So I'm too young to know Tommy, but I've heard many great stories about him. <coughs> And, uh, you know, that's why I say that. So, yeah, thanks, Raj, for that. Um, yeah. Also very subjective. Well, we got this new skate park, but we can't show hardly anything because it's not showing up on okay. the skate park. Oh, yeah, it says it's ready to roll well, maybe, in maybe spring. The, the okay. Co the coverage. So, right on. Skate park ready to roll in spring of 2001. Look at this, folks. Who was responsible for this? We got some great faces. It, you know, it, it was never my interest, but I'll tell you what, those people that are into the uh, skateboard culture, they, they love it. They're, they spent hours and hours and hours practicing. I see many really cool parks in the Vancouver area. There's one down by, um, on Howard Street, down by yeah. that rink there. Yeah, nice. And this, this was at the Golden Hawk. It was to be one of the province's largest skateboard parks. And this is Cody Creamer and Brandon Davis. They peer down from atop the half pipe right there. Great photo in the old local paper. And who are these boys? Skaters enjoyed one last day at the Miramichi Skate Park before the snow. <laughs> Evan Savoy or Savoy, Nick Arsenault, Brendan Davis, and Cody Creamer. Look at those healthy young dudes right there, hanging out at the park, getting some fresh air, bumps, bruises, 
and you know you got to take the knocks if you're going to be doing that sport it's a really yeah. really interesting subculture i don't know much about it but i respect it highly because they spend a lot of time and effort practicing and doing it and really doing their own thing now our last issue we uh, showed norman young yeah but now we have a not dated picture i found in color Okay. I'll just show that real quick. Okay, so Young honored by New Brunswick's old time fiddle orchestra. He was well, the. We uh, showed that. Yeah, we showed that last now, time. Now, this is what he does. Here is 2000, October 24th, final cuts with barber schools closed and salons grabbing customers. The days of the downtown barber shop are ending. Veteran barber Norm Young gives customer Arnold Colepaw a trim. So he was the head fiddler of the Miramichi Fiddlers, I do believe. There he is, folks. And you know what? Yeah, the old downtown barbershop, there's, there, that's actually, that's not the most accurate. There's still, uh, there's still some, I've seen a little revamp in some barbershops and stuff. I was, when I was just in Boston or in Maine, uh, my nephew's buddy, he, he's an old school barber, so he's in his early 20s, and he works as a barber, and he's got the whole monopoly of his classmates. They all go to him, he gives like a yeah. proper shave. There's nothing like it, getting a good old, you know, a good old shave, Raj. <coughs> you ever get shaved by a barber, like straight up, the old straight blade, and they just give it to you really no, good? I didn't have nothing to shave back then. <laughs> But I didn't yeah. realize that my dentist not only carved teeth, he carved up some of these things. Oh, right on. He... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laughing at Roger's intros here. That's great. So, hello, folks, it's uh, the Carvers pose with their creations. Back row, D Don Loban and Sandra Loban, folks. Carving some pumpkins amongst many other people. Nothing like, this is from October 24th. I love carving up a good pumpkin, Raj. And there's some Miramichi pumpkin carving from the year 2000. That's a pretty cool little cat right there. Who was in that photo? Donald Loban, the old dentist speaking of downtown. Sandra Loban, Frank McFarland, Danielle Bernard, Andrea Hashi, Ann Loban, Claudette Hashi, Rose McFarland, Carol Ann Bernard, Rupert Bernard, David McFarland, Yvonne Hashi, and Laura McFarland and Mark Loban. So it looked like a few families were involved in that. And there they are, folks, right there. Carving up some pumpkins, having some fun, really cool. Year 2000. Okay, we'll just pay a visit to Knappen and St. Margaret's. Okay, Knappen and St. Margaret's honor sports figures, folks, right here from the year 2000. We got some cool looking sports uh, trophies being awarded. Who are these people? And does anybody watching know who they are? Joey Ryan, uh, the most dedicated. Tony McDonald, Rookie of the Year. Dean Gillis and Greg Cook was the MVP, and that's from Midget Baseball. And in Pee Wee, I'm going to skip the first name. We had Greg Fee, the most improved. Jamie Edwards was the top batter. Corey Hilchey was Rookie of the Year. And in Bantam, Corey McCollum was the top hitter. Brad McDonald was the best defensive. Missing was Nathan Hardinger. MVP Rookie of the Year was Danny Cummo. But, folks, in Pee Wee, in the year 2000, the MVP was none other than your Chatham Ironman, Ori Cook. He is a fan favorite up at the old Ironman Park, which I just drove by this morning, Raj, when I went out for a little drive having a coffee. And you know what? I haven't been around to watch much Ironman baseball over the past years, but I hear he is one heck of a ball player. Gives it his all every game, and my mom's a big fan. And my nephews in Maine were just mentioning Ori Cook, Raj, when I was just there. They said he is quick, and what a great player. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in the year 2000, the Tommies win provincial title. James M. Hill shuts out defending champion Sussex Sonics 3 0 to reclaim yeah, New Brunswick one, Championship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And here it is. They are talking about field hockey. There she is, folks. Glenda O'Neill from Taintville. She had a long career, a great career of playing field hockey and of coaching. And I found out uh, she was also coaching ringette. So Glenda, 
uh, right on. This is the James M. Hill girls field hockey team. Uh, they were undefeated in the season. They finished first. And they will, here's their team right here. And that's the coach. That's a great picture of Glenda, folks. And here is her team right here that went on to a provincial title. And we're going to name that roster out. We have, Raj, Ashley Morehouse, Pam Patterson. And I think that's the Pam Patterson that we mentioned on those hockey teams. I want to know if Pam Patterson is still playing sports to this day. Sarah Clark, Marley Preston, Hannah Hamilton, Hillary Hamilton, Sherry Stymus, sister of Heather and Kara. Heather was the coach of the James M. Hill uh, varsity basketball team this past year. And she did a great job. Emily Walls. In the back row, we have Melissa Murdoch, Jessica McCollum, Lee Jenkins, Melissa Richard, I think Roger's neighbor in Logieville here. Yeah, that's her. Uh, Megan Duffy, Candace Bushy, uh, I know her sister, Jennifer Berry, Selena Hardy, Megan Bremner, Heather DePlacy, and Laura Sargent. Congratulations, girls. There's nothing like winning a title, and you guys, I'm sure, deserved it with uh, the great leadership of Glenda. Oh, Glenda. This is similar, a similar thing there, but there's a little note right there. Okay. Right on. So the Tommies, this is that team. The Tommies were the field hockey champs. This is Hannah Hamilton in an action shot. There's the team of winning it. We just mentioned that roster. Congratulations. Look at that action shot of Hannah Hamilton. She meant business, folks. There was no joke in, in that uh, athlete right there. And Roger just pointed something out. They won. James M. Hill has won. Tommy's coach, Glenda O'Neill, was thrilled with taking home the provincial crown, which the Tommies have won nine times, with the last being in 98. Last year, they lost 2 nothing in the finals. So they've held. There's always been a great tradition of field hockey at the James M. Hill High School. I know my sister, Lana, was a goaltender. They won a provincial title. And I'm pretty sure my younger sister, Vicky, who... I don't know her position, but I know she was tenacious and more on the defensive side. I think they won a provincial title as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. So this is a guy that died tragically on a boating accident, so they named uh, okay. the plane Paul J. Hayes, Memorial Wastewater Treatment Plant. He died... Um, no, it uh, doesn't really mention it, but this is in honor of a man that, uh, you know, named... There was a water treatment plant named after this gentleman right here, um, the Paul J. Hayes Memorial Wastewater Treatment Plant from October 26, and it was uh, right on. So that mayor and council, co-workers, family and friends were on hand, and a small reception followed immediately afterwards to celebrate the man involved. You know, I've also, and congratulate. you know, I've, I've been thinking about that, Raj, like, you see somebody's name on something, okay? And, you know, we everybody goes through their lives and do these things. And, you know, there's the big things. You know, you get a highway named after you, an arena, and like Lord Beaverbrook and all that stuff. But those, in a community, those, those small little things that are named after a person, mm -hmm. I think deserve to be highly recognized because that person obviously did a lot for their community and a lot for many things just to deserve that accolade. So that's one of the, that's yeah. one of the mentions right there. That's just a, uh, that's Swedish share, but that's, uh, that's a okay. male new owner. Right? Okay, <coughs> this is in 2000. Welcome to the Miramichi. Raj just informed me. Is it, was it Finnish or Swedish? I thought they were Finnish. Oh, yeah, Finnish. I yeah. think it was Finnish, and they said that was the, the Finnish, and it was like, welcome to the Miramichi, and this is like the new owners of the mill. What did they call, what was it called at that time? Wayhauser. The mayor and council of the city of Miramichi would also like to say congratulations and thank you to the more than 100, 1,400 employees of Repap Miramichi who made our mill a world-class complex. We wish you much, much success. Who were the councillors in the year 2000? Well, here they are. The mayor is Rupert Bernard. We talked about him many times. Reg, Reggie Falconer. Um, Edward Ned Manderson, Robert B. Trevors, Kenneth Clark, John Foley, John McLaughlin, Martin McIntyre, Brian King, Danny Allen, Jerry Cormier, Paul Dawson, and Deputy Mayor Frank Trevors. There's only, and you know, that just shows you how much of a little, little old boys club it was. We have no ladies in that list, folks. No business like movie business. <laughs> this is 24 years ago? 
Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my God, look at that. The old uh, movie theater over there opened. And it was set to open on Friday, November 10th in the year 2000. Studio 5 Empire Theater. Garrett Bosma, a teacher up at Nelson, wrote that article. I saw, so I saw uh, Yogi Bear with my nephews there. I saw, Raj, I saw one movie with you over there. It was that Leonardo DiCaprio movie, um, what was it called? Um, when he was like, you know, surviving the bear mauling and all that stuff. I thought that was over the top. It could have been good, but they went way too far with it. Um, and there's no business like the movie business. State of the Empire shows a huge gala. And you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. It just seems like, have we... Has the heyday of movie theaters come and gone? Because that place doesn't look like there's much action happening. I did see a recent movie over there, Raj, since I've been home. Yeah. And it was the David Adams Richards documentary that was... Uh, uh, oh my God, I can't even remember her name right now. I'm so sorry. But it was a local filmmaker from the Rogersville area for the National Film Board of Canada that did the film. I'm going to remember her name. Sorry about that. And on the back of that, folks, I cannot... It, like there, we, I, okay, so what do we got here? We got Jason Dixon's been mentioned a lot, you know, in the locals and all that stuff. Brad Malone and Jimmy Malone and stuff. But you know what? Actually, I thought that was somebody else. So I thought that was Manik Ravisha, who I think we've mentioned a lot here. Oh, yeah. But it's not her. Sorry about that, Manik. I hope you're doing good out in Calgary. <laughs> the the theater, some crowd there. Oh yeah. <coughs> okay, we have their sisters. That's what you're saying. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so this is the grand opening of our a local movie theater. You know, those in Chad, those of us in Chad, and we used to love the Vogue. What was the one that was over in Newcastle? What was the name of that one? David Adams Richards. Uptown Theater. Yeah, I think uh, the David Adams Richards' family ran that for a while. Mm -hmm. If that's the same one, I'm yeah. not sure. Uh, here's some sisters. Debbie Flieger and Rose Spray in attendance to check out the new theater. There they are, folks. Uh, who? What was the name of that Leonardo DiCaprio? And who got married on the Miramichi? Well, let's just do one of these. This is on the back page. How about Sutherland and Sherard? Right there, folks. That was in the year 2000. And... Yeah, there's William Babkirk there, down the road. Oh, yeah? Cunningham and Babkirk as well. Right there. They got married in 2000. This is a thanks... It was Kara and Andrew Sutherland. They got married on July 15th, and they were just thanking everybody for their beautiful wedding, and a special thank you to her parents, Loretta and Calvin Sutherland, and Sherman and Alda Sherard for all their love and support. Right on. Congratulations. I hope you guys are still going strong to this day. This, uh, I have another action photo. Okay. Some this was that. some bad weather in the year 2000. Yeah, this were. is from October 31st, the year 2000. This is a fierce nor'easter, folks. Look at that photo right there. I'll read the caption in a second to let everybody know what, when, and what was hap where where this was happening. The fierce nor'easter smashed the Miramichi region over the weekend. Um, wharves and shorelines all along Miramichi Bay suffered the brunt of the storm. Here, waves crash up against the fuel pumps at McEachran's Wharf in Tabas and Tack. That's why I didn't recognize it. That's out in Tabas and Tack. Over back. And the back. This is from that little damage in city. And here's some photos of that nor'easter. Bad weather, folks. A, you know, a storm can cause a lot of havoc. And what's going on here? You got more from that, Raj? Yeah. Well, th this is Nigawak Wharf was totally submerged. Tabas and Deck commercial fishermen uh, shovel snow out of their boat. Station Wharf marina crews scramble to recover floating docks. The stage at Waterford Green was surrounded by Miramichi River waters. Is that uh, Dan yeah. Bush Adam? Yeah. And the Frank McFarland captured the Newcastle Public Library, folks. There's a Newcastle Public Wa Library. The water up to there, and this is on Chatham, the water, that Waterford Green Park by uh, down on Water Street. Wow. Basin Inn and Eskumanak area. And then Basin Inn and Eskumanak. We all know what happened in Eskumanak in 1959. Some boats are still missing. This is from the year 2000, folks. I'm sure this brought up lots of bad memories. This is Basin Inn and Eskumanak. 
from that storm. Uh, that's the Eskumenak Wharf, yeah, five foot high wooden seawall of the outer section of the Eskumenak Wharf. O'Neill's newest expansion was heavily damaged during the storm. Wow. Uh, I think we should mention this here. I got two uh, pages okay. here. Child care with a difference. Kinder Tot owner Charlene Dignam with assistant director Cheryl Spray. Kinder Tot's Children's Center is opening doors to children and their parents. I think, is this the one that's at the uh, school there? Yeah. At the NBCC? There they are, folks, working with the young children. Very important. And here's some more pictures of that. Um, okay, we will show the kids learn lots at Kinder Tots. I think this is the facility that's at the NBCC. And here they are, folks. It's a very important uh, thing to have children being cared for in a great way as the parents don't have, they're at work. So Jonathan Mackenzie and Worker Veranda make their own magazines. Tammy Dixon reads to Courtney. Nancy, oh, okay. Zachary is munching on a plastic carrot. Brody, is that uh, Melissa's wearing his favorite jersey? No, Toronto Maple Leafs and Brevin. Nancy and Sarah are dressed up while costume designer Rebecca waits for more actors. Well, there she is, folks. Nancy Como, the wife of the late Leon Como, who is my dad's brother, Roger's younger brother as well. And Nancy is now living in Fredericton, and I hope that you are doing great out there. I had a text with you over Christmas to wish you a Merry Christmas, and you sounded okay. Here's our one of our renowned singers on the memory machine. Okay. Did this all all right on. Life, we played a and, Jimmy Lawler song. Yeah, and you can recognize the people that were involved Okay. There. So Jim Lawler plays Christmas songs at Santa's Helpers. And it raised thirteen hundred dollars. There he is, folks. What song did we play, Jimmy Lawler? I think it was the Troubadour. I was driving around the square in Newcastle playing yeah. one of this guy's songs. Yeah. So who was who were the performers, Raj, at this time? Well, none other than the great Susan Butler. We're trying to get Susan for a little interview too. Bob McCollum. I was already at his house filming him. Hey, Bob. Uh, the Miramichi Fiddlers, Marilyn and Bernard Young, Norman Sturgeon, Jimmy Lawler, Terry Preston, Fast Lane, Danny and Jeff, Donna Hubbard, Paul Flaherty, and the Nelson Doyle dancers. Right on. Yeah. Really cool. So we're at 50 minutes already. 50 minutes. A little bit of a two-minute thing in there. Uh, maybe 10 minutes with Edie. So we're up past an hour, so maybe another 10 minutes or so. Yeah. Well, this is a quick show here. Okay. Oh, right on. So this is from the Times and Transcript, November 11th, uh, lest we forget. It's one of the things that I think that we do not want to give away, and we have to keep this tradition alive to remember these people. We do live in a place, the luxuries that we have, don't listen to those people that want to cancel everything. In my opinion, it's very important to honor those that went and fought for our way of life. That's it's it's worth fighting for. And thus, these are the symbols of our heroes, the war medals, and they look beautiful. And I know a gentleman in Logieville has a really good collection of these. I saw them with my own two eyes about a month ago. Really excellent, Raj. Thank you for sharing that well, and for honoring that. Well, let's just, just go back to John Osmond's family again here. Okay. Showing them what, uh, what they look like, and there's a family. Going. So who's John Osmond Jeep again? John Osmond. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Jeep. Yeah. Yeah. So Everlasting Love. This is from November 10th, the year 2000. Family working together helps couple mark 60 years of marriage. This is, is the couple on their wedding day in Holland in 1940. And at their granddaughter's wedding last summer is Jeep and Madi Bosma, folks. Great Miramichiers. Look at that beautiful photo. This is 60 years uh on their marriage day and then at their granddaughter's wedding and he was a baker if i'm not correct yeah, they had a bakery yeah, yeah that's right yeah and i know their son john is a local historian that writes books he's a real gentleman i remember when I, my first encounter i was just a kid playing some hockey and he was a uh, his, his son garrett was playing a little bit 
Um, and then he was such a great guy, and he always is. And I know Garrett a little bit. Uh, great teacher, great guy. Surrounded by their children, the couple's 50th winner is from left. It's Maria, Johannes, John, Alice, and sorry if I butcher this, Tanaki. And there's another great, they're just honoring a great Miramichi family. And there's John Bosma, teacher, local historian, and a fine gentleman. And he might be a good guy to go interview about some history as well. Okay, we're going to sneak in a little bit of comedy here from uh, my working days. Okay, Raj, I remember as a kid, Roger, this man right here, always was an influence to me. There's many things, and Roger was working up at the paper mill, and always coming over and sharing with me all these things that he was doing. And this is when times were different, where there was no social media or anything, so he had to draw things out, photocopy. It was a very different world. So here's an example of this. I don't know what this is. This all comes <laughs> blind to me. What are you doing? <laughs> well, this, this has something to do with, with uh, my hockey and baseball pool. Here. Okay. But the, each one has a little bit of... Okay. The, the, the people can read read the answers. So they, what were you doing here? Like you were just passing these out around work? Well, Big piece of paper. <laughs> okay, so my shop. Okay, so in Roger's shop, he'd make these things just for humor. This is like before you were sending an email to somebody for a joke. He was doing it by hand on himself. I don't know if I'm, you know, if there's a context involved. This is what it looks like uh, back there, and Roger was taking the time to do all this stuff. I will read out some captions. Okay, so this fish, it says, "I wish they would never believe me." Any, okay, so, oh no, is not a, another hair. Is this a when he, was this last guy's last name hair? Well, probably. Right. So it just shows this guy fishing. The fish is talking. Oh, no, not another. Oh, yeah, it's spelled H-A-R-E, so it must have been one of your co-workers' last name, Hair. Yeah. <laughs> I hope Art is not watching me, eh, Bob? So who's Art? Oh, your no. boss or something? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Hard to tell. Right, right. But Roger, since the bass fishing is coming on right now, Roger Como in the year 2000, what, what year would these have been? 2000? Right. Yeah. Okay, so this is 24 years ago. Okay, so Roger was in his 50s, still having some fun. Now I know how they catch the big ones. Roger thought he was very clever by showing a great big <laughs> hook right there. Maybe that was a fly that was tied by Eileen. Yeah. What was her name? Murphy? Ryan. Ryan or Murphy? Ryan. Ryan, yeah. Okay, and then this is old dogaroo dog. Yeah. I'm getting more attention now than when I was a baby. Aubrey Who's this Hare. guy? Yes, Aubrey Hare. Okay, so that was probably he, him he right here. He, he doesn't follow like sports okay. at all. All right, so, so this is Aubrey Hare right here, folks. Roger Como. Uh, you know, hey, Roger, why don't you go grab one of your trophies right now? And we'll just show it. Since we're getting on to hockey pool season, we'll give you a little teaser. So here's Aubrey Hare. Uh, Raj said he never really followed sports very much, and he won the baseball and hockey pool. Ladies and gentlemen, it just goes to show you it's luck of the draw. And Roger Como was always uh, connecting community. Look at this trophy right here, folks. Okay, Major League Baseball pennant pool. Uh, we'll read some names on that, but Roger... This is this okay. Here it is, right here. Actually, Raj, we don't have a sponsor today, so maybe you're you're you just walked <laughs> yourself into one of your own official sponsorships. Look at this really cool thing. This is a Major League Baseball pennant pool. Roger not only organized all of the hockey pools, the baseball pools out of the mill. He took his own time to make these trophies on his own time, of course. This was never done on the company's dollar. And then he was, look at this cool sculpture. This is a really cool sculpture. Rod, this is all, Rod, that's a really thin waist right there. This is all, a nice arse on that one, Roger. I like that. This is all Roger Como's handiwork, a really cool trophy. And in 2004, Norman Savage won it with 455 points, whatever that means. And then we had, we just showed you Aubrey Hare, 428. Sheldon Dunnett won it in 2001. 2002, none other than the pool's host, Roger Como. And in 2003, former Chatham Ironman, Shannon Keown won the, the baseball pool, folks. And right on, Roger, that's a really cool thing. And, it, you know, that's something that Raj and I have in common. We both make 
trophies. And we're going to show you a couple more. But isn't that really cool, guys? Um, yeah, thanks, Raj. How much, what do you think we should do? We're at one hour right now. Let's well, oh, oh, and here's another one. Yeah, this, you can do this here pretty quick. There. Okay. That's the boys involved in the pool. Right? Oh, right on. So this is Roger just connecting. It says, no wonder Aubrey won both pools. Look who he competed with. <laughs> <laughs> this group of merry fine gentlemen right there there's nothing better than having you know when you go to work you got to work hard but you also got to get along with your employees and i remember raj as a kid i remember you always telling me stories and always showing me these things i was really intrigued and inspired that i wasn't doing any of these things and a few too many so one of the people that competed in this pool had a few too many that day he fell into some sort of a hole with his legs spread wide open hey mom i told you those were too big <laughs> i <laughs> somebody in their overalls or those fishing pants <laughs> and then he has for some reason a toronto maple leafs logo on there so we have sheldon Aubrey had a Yankees hat on, but the hat sure looks good on him. He wasn't a Yankees fan. And there's Roger. Garth. Who's Garth? Taylor. Garth Taylor, Chris. Leggett. Leggett and Billy Bucky Finland, folks. Who's Sheldon again? Oh, uh, uh, it's on here. Yeah. Uh, Dunnett. Sheldon Dunnett. So there they are, folks. A bunch of dudes at the old Miramichi repap before our community was crippled by the loss of that business. There is a hockey pool, or sorry, baseball pool group at the Old Mill, and Roger was making these and making it special. He was well, each, uh, each group consists, consisted of six people. Okay. And a bunch of sixes everywhere, you know, like maybe four or five groups. When you say group, you mean like you had to pick, you I mean the, know, six, the baseball players? Six people in one group. Oh, I see. Draft, right? Oh, I see. And then it'd be six people in another part of the mill. Oh, I see. Spread around. Oh, so you guys had uh, so okay. the overall winner with the most points. Right. Got their name on there. Right on. He he was a, he's an inventor, a builder, an engineer, an artist, a dancer, the whole thing. We've seen it over the time. And this collection that we're able to sit down in the basement with and enjoy is because Roger took his time over decades and decades and decades of consistency to share these local stories. Again, we're just having fun here. We're not proclaiming to be experts. We're just showing a collection on YouTube. We call it Merima History She, but it's a personal collection. We're just having fun. So if anybody's out there rolling their eyes and wanting to correct this, that, or the other, or we should be doing... No, we shouldn't. We should be doing what we're doing because that's what we're doing. We're having fun with each other, eh, Raj? And that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's 2003. That is part three. There's. Is this all covered yet? I don't know. Okay, so we got more 2000 coming at you, most likely tomorrow, eh? Yeah, okay, so I'll see Raj tomorrow, and uh, thank you guys for watching. And Raj, thanks again for uh, doing all of this, because yeah. it's been a great, uh, fun project for us. Well, we're and we're finding nice stuff. Yeah, we're finding lots of... We'll just say hi to this lady here, and then we'll shut her off. Okay, who's this now? Heather Muir, congratulations on her recent graduation with honors from the Respiratory Therapy Technology Program in St. John. Heather is currently employed with the Megan HBO Center in Fredericton, New Brunswick, and also with the St. John Regional Hospital. Congratulations, Heather, from Mum, Dad, and Jackie. Now that's 2000 now. I this don't is, know what she's doing now. This is year 2000. I think she's still in it. Great photo of Heather. She was at my dad's funeral. I spoke to her and... When I was in Fredericton a few weeks ago, I had uh, I kind of escorted Mum there to deal with some governmental things after the passing of my father. And who do you think I saw at the Chapters bookstore was this fine woman right here, Heather Muir, one of my sister's uh, best friends growing up. So right on, Raj. Yeah. And we'll check with you guys tomorrow. And uh, you guys, good luck on your bass fishing this evening.